the Mark's magical science. in Ingenuity, which is a part of the Ironbridge Gorge Grouping Museums in Telford in Shropshire. And it's full of fantastic science stuff. of educational science experiments, we're going to be covering a whole range of topics within science, most of which is actually taught at schools, including physics, which is about physical processes, chemistry, which is about properties of materials, and life processes and living things, but we're going to put a lot of emphasis on the human body. I designed this educational programme to be as versatile as possible, and so there's a variety of different ways in which you can use these resources. Now, from my steam car, and I think this is the steering wheel, or steering lever, I want to explain to you how each experiment has been filmed. Each experiment is in four sections. The first section is the simplest, and it will show you all the materials and equipment you're going to need to carry out the experiment. The second part is where I actually show you what to do with the materials and equipment to carry out the experiment. Now I won't actually complete the experiment, I'll go up to the point just before something's supposed to happen, so that's what I want you to actually do what you see me do and see what happens. The third section is where I will show you what should happen if you do everything that I tell you to do and if it all goes to plan. The fourth and final section is what I will explain to you, in summary, the science involved in the experiment you just did. Now I'd like to give you a few ideas about how you might choose to use these resources. In a classroom setting, there's several different ways in which you could use these resources. The most obvious way in which I could use the resource is to use all four segments for each experiment. So for example, you could start the lesson by displaying to the kids and pupils the layout they need, all the experimental equipment and how, they need, and how they need to set things out. Then immediately followed by the segment where it's me explaining to camera and to you how to do the actual experiment up to the point just before I actually show them what happens. Then you could send the pupils off to do the experiments and when you're happy they've done what they're going to do, bring them back, play the third part of the sequence where I actually show them what should happen if they've done it all correctly. Finally, the fourth sequence where I actually describe a brief summary of the science going on. Another way you might choose to use these resources, particularly if you don't have the display technology in the room you're using in the school, is to watch all the sequences yourself as your lesson preparation. A bit like do-it-yourself teacher training, where you actually watch all, each of the segments, see what you need to do, what you need to get the pupils to do, and then the final explanation, and you just deliver the material in class without using my resources in the class at all. Another obvious option is just to use one or two of the four segments to support your teaching in the classroom. So for example, you might choose to show them the clip or the extract where I show them what to actually do up to the point before it actually happens, and then cut back in once they've completed the experiment with a brief explanation by me to camera of the science involved. Now there's a number of different ways you might choose to use these resources in the structuring of your lessons. For example, how about you use some of this material as starter activities before your main lesson begins. So just something fun and lively to get your science lessons off to a, an interesting start. Similarly, you might use it to end the lesson. Once they've had a particularly interesting or difficult lesson, end it on something fun and interesting. And remember, there's a huge variety of different topics you can choose from, and it's very likely you'll find something which will be akin to what you've been doing with the pupils in, in that lesson anyway. How about using some of the ideas to 
illustrate particular points that you're trying to make in your lesson. And it may be something you will actually just demonstrate to the pupils yourself rather than let them do it. And that applies for the Star Trek activity and the end activity as well. And your pupils will often get just as much fun and enjoyment and engagement out of watching you do these things. Obviously, letting them do them themselves is the ideal. And of course, remember in terms of how long you may choose to take to deliver some of these resources, you may find that some of the activities will work perfectly for you for the whole lesson. You will use 45 minutes, an hour or more to, of your lesson time to actually go through the whole experiment as described. But you may also just use parts of your lesson and just use it for a small segment. And remember, although these video resources can be used as standalone on their own, they were actually designed to complement and support printed and CD-ROM resources also available to you. So for example, you may choose to print out the instruction sheets which are cartoon illustrated for the pupils to make them a bit more fun and interesting, along with the supporting pages which were designed primarily for teachers use. And on those pages, the scientific explanations go into a lot more detail usually than what I've actually said to camera and you'll be given other information such as where you'd see the science going on in the real world. So it's very much a complete package if you use it as a whole multimedia approach. At the end of the day, however you choose to use these resources, your primary job is to make science engaging and stimulating for your pupils. So I'm going to show you a range of experiments that you're going to see which require minimal equipment, it's easy to get, inexpensive, and more importantly, your pupils could do this stuff at home. And I think you'll agree, that's one brilliant way of getting your kids inspired and excited about science.